Welcome to the Tier 2 Training on Produce Safety, brought to you by the New Mexico Farmers Marketing Association, with support from La Montanita Co-op and the Wallace Center at Winrock International. In this series of training modules, which are designed to support the New Mexico Tier 1 and Tier 2 on-farm and classroom trainings, we discuss how to conduct a thorough food safety risk assessment of your farm. Module 2 is all about risks from animals on your farm. Critters, that is animals of all kinds, can be a source of crop damage and they can also be a source of human pathogen. What are the hazards from critters? In a word, poop. And other bodily fluids and crop damage for sure, but mainly poop. Think about domestic and working animals. If pets follow you into the fields, can you discourage, train, or restrain them away from the crops? If work animals are used in production areas, can you keep them out of the beds while you're harvesting? And is there a procedure to deal with their urine and feces? And are you thinking about where you may be walking or driving? Is there any risk of walking or driving through raw manure? What barriers do you have in place? And is there a procedure in place if they find their way into crops? Do you have dedicated equipment, clothing, shoes, or boots for when you work with animals? You have the deer early in the season, you have mm -hmm. the newborn fawns, but uh, it's not terrible. We do have um, the three-tier fencing, electric fencing that we have in place for some of our more tender, um, the greens, the strawberries. And then we take that, that fencing and with our crop rotations, then we'll shift our fencing um, to be able to make sure that, you know, the, the leafy greens are taken care of, the strawberries are taken care of. Um, and in that enclosure, um, our kales, our collards, etc. So the only wildlife we really have a problem with is deer crossing through the fields. And um, the way we prevent that is with an electric fence. So I have a solar powered electric fencer that uses a car battery for backup on days like today when it's cloudy. And um, I put in either temporary stakes like this or regular metal T posts with um, plastic insulators. And then we run um, either one or two strands of this is rope with wire woven in. And once you have that set up, um, if the deer bump into it, obviously they're gonna run away because it's an electric fence. And uh, usually what we do to try to get the deer to go to the fence so they don't just jump over it or walk around it is to put some sort of attractant, usually peanut butter on the fence. So that way they get the idea that when they lick the fence or get against the fence, it's gonna shock them. And that usually keeps them from just looking at the fence and jumping it. So I usually try to put uh, the peanut butter on the fence once a week or after it really rains hard and you think it would get washed off. And usually every about 10 to 15 feet. Um, again, you don't have to necessarily do it all season, but it's good every once in a while to try to try to reintroduce the peanut butter so that you know deer will become scared again, that type of thing. Do you have a problem with wildlife eating and damaging crops? Wildlife deterrents come in many forms. What do you use now and how effective is it? Can you use portable electric fencing or is it so bad that you really need to invest in permanent deer fences? Noisemakers and the car sales guy can also be effective. Permanent deer fencing is a significant investment, but I know farmers who feel it's well worth it especially if deer are a consistent problem. What are you doing to attract critters? High weeds, compost and junk piles are an excellent source of food and habitat for unwanted creatures. Are you mowing and cleaning up regularly to discourage them from making permanent homes around your buildings and around your crops? If you're making or applying compost that doesn't contain animal manure, then there's no restriction on when it can be applied and lower concern about runoff. However, a nice pile like this will definitely attract rodents and the creatures that eat rodents. 
So you have to think about how close it should be to food production and handling, and are there any barriers you can put in place to reduce risk? Are there any conditions that could make wildlife or pets more of a problem? For instance, birds that forage at a feedlot are more likely to carry human pathogens in their feces. Do you check for footprints, crop damage, and poop before harvesting? When you find evidence of animal intrusion at harvest time on a rural farm, the best practice is to flag a three to five foot area around the spot, do not harvest that, and possibly discard produce. On a very small rural or urban farm where you may be growing 15 to 20 feet of any one crop, a five foot radius may not be practical. So use your best judgment. If you're harvesting by hand, it's possible to monitor for problems as you go. If you're using a mechanical harvester, monitoring for hazards might not happen until you are packing the crop. At first glance, it might seem to make sense that this grower has parked a trailer load of peaches under a tree. It's cooler under the tree and the fruit are protected from the direct sunlight of a hot summer day. But you can easily imagine a few birds or even a whole flock sitting on the branches above and happily pooping on the fruit, which can have very serious food safety consequences. With a little effort, there may be a better solution. And this image speaks for itself. Are you making attractive homes for rodents and birds in your packing and storage area? around your buildings or next to crop growing areas. The compost may not contain raw manure, but it may still be a great habitat. So what do you need to change and how will you change it to reduce risk? And these are images that I took from farms that I visited. Are you checking and controlling for pests in your packing and staging area, around your packaging materials, or in your cold storage? And how are you controlling for pests? Is it safe? If you use traps, do you check and clean them out regularly? Can you seal up cracks and holes? Can you discourage the birds from nesting in the rafters? If you use poison traps, do you keep them outside the food handling areas? Above all, keep your operation reasonably clean and tidy, and this will go a long way to reducing risk.